The U.S. expert is warning of an approaching public health crisis as users of illegal anabolic steroids reach middle age. In a study published in the U.S. this year, three out of 86 steroid users had suffered a heart attack by the age of 45. Here's Harrison Pope from Harvard Medical School, who's presenting new U.S. research to Australian health experts in Melbourne uh, today. Uh, welcome, Harrison. So what are we now learning about long-term anabolic steroid use? Well, we're just beginning to scratch the surface of the long-term effects of these drugs. And the reason is, steroids have been around since World War II, but they were not widely used by ordinary rank-and-file guys in the gym here in Australia until about the 1990s. And therefore, the oldest members of this population, people who started steroids in, say, 1993 when they were 20, are only now reaching middle age and entering the age of risk for some of these long-term diseases. So only now are we beginning to see the long-term cardiac effects of uh, hardening of the arteries, uh, potential heart attacks, as you described, possible strokes, uh, impairment of the heart's ability to function. All of these things are beginning to crop up, and we're quite worried, both in America and, and elsewhere, that these will accelerate over the course of the next decade. Mm. Well, how long have these people who are having heart attacks and strokes, uh, how long have they been taking the steroids? But, uh, you'd think that they would have stopped taking them uh, at some point. Well, uh, very often people develop a dependence syndrome on steroids. Now, it's not the same as, say, alcohol dependence, where you take the drug and a reward is delivered 15 minutes later. With steroids, um, your reward is increased muscularity that can be weeks or months later. But there is still a tendency of these drugs to cause dependence because they suppress the body's natural production of testosterone. And therefore, if you stop your steroids after a long period of time, your own testosterone function has fallen almost to zero. And therefore, there's a great temptation to resume taking the steroids to make the bad feelings go away. And this, plus other factors, causes about 30% of steroid users to get a dependent syndrome where they go on and on and on taking these drugs and often will accumulate 10 years, 15 years of lifetime exposure to these drugs, which is when the, the long-term effects start to build up. So what are the implications then for the health service? Well, the problem is that we don't see these people very much. Steroids typically are first used in the mid-20s. The median age of onset is about 23. And so by the time that these guys are using steroids, they're no longer kids under the surveillance of teachers or coaches or parents. They're independent men, and therefore they're under the radar. They're not seen by the medical community. Uh, even if you take a massive dose of steroids, it won't bring you to the emergency ward in the manner that it might happen with cocaine or methamphetamine or other such drugs. So we have to rely on the fact that, that these people are finally going to begin to notice some of these complications and perhaps uh, speak to their primary care physicians. Mm. But rooting them out and, and finding these cases remains a big challenge. Harrison, Australian research uh, on this published today talks about bro science that users find they're not getting help from the medical profession, e even if they do go to see their doctor. So they're relying on fellow users, uh, advising them on how to minimise harm. Is that an experience you've had in the States? It is absolutely the same in the States, yes. Uh, one of the things about the medical community is that it wasn't until the 1980s that doctors actually conceded that these drugs worked for gaining muscle. And it's been a source of great embarrassment to the medical community, as you might imagine, that it took us so long to recognize what was so patently obvious to the athletes themselves. And so, understandably, perhaps, there is a suspicion of medical professionals among steroid users, and very few doctors who are truly well-educated about these drugs. Uh, this is something that needs to be more systematically taught to the next generation of physicians. Professor Harrison Pope from Harvard Medical School, thank you. Thank you.